What's going on guys? Welcome to part 3 of machine learning and pattern recognition for use with stock and forex trading. Where we left off we were just graphing up our data. There's a few ugly parts of the data so we're going to fix those things. And then one more thing I'm going to show you is just uh, another representation of that spread. Uh, because again, I, I feel guilty because I'm pretty sure we're going to leave spread out of this entire uh, series. So just want to point you out uh, or point out spread to you before we end up going down this really, really long path that probably won't ever get back to spread. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do some stuff with this plot and then uh, we'll be on our way. So the uh, first thing that we did, really the only change that we made to just the raw plot, right, was, I mean, we, I guess we changed the figure size and then we, you know, we did the dates, but we haven't really done anything else. So there's a couple other things that we probably ought to do. And just for uh, displaying this kind of, th this tick data, um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is once we've arranged this date, the next thing that I think that we ought to do is what we can, if we can do is kind of cur or angle the date. So we can go for label and ax1.xaxis.get underscore tick labels, empty parameters. And then just do label dot set underscore rotation, and we're going to set that to 45 degrees. The next thing that we really want to do is fix. Remember on the y-axis how it was kind of like I don't know the numbers, right? It was doing like a plus one point whatever. We kind of want that to go away because that's, that just looks ugly. And there's no reason for it. We kind of want to see these decimals, so because um, it does that for us for. For a good reason, right? So most of the time you don't really care about like really long decimals, but in this case, this is one of those times where we do care. So what we want to do is do plot GCA and uh, dot get underscore y axes empty parameters again get underscore major underscore formatter empty parameters stun, uh, dot set underscore use offset. And then we just want to turn that to false so it doesn't do that to us. So now let's just see where we are real quick and make sure we didn't um, do anything wrong or typo. It's highly likely that I typo because it's hard to type and talk. And sure enough I did. I put a comma right here. So do dot if you were actually following me. Make sure you put that dot there and I get the stupid error because I did that. Now let's try again see if we got any other errors. Yay, we didn't. Okay, so here's what we got right now. Obviously, the date's kind of eh, <laughs> go off there. But again, this is really just one day worth of data, so it doesn't matter too much. Plus, if you see down in the bottom right where you hover, you can see the time and the value. So it's not a huge deal. Um, but I'll show you guys how to fix that just in case you care. And so anyway, we'll close out of that. That's looking good for now. Let me hit this because it's going to give me an error. There we go. Okay, so... To make space for the bottom, what we can do is use this subplots adjust. So we can do plot sub or yeah subplots underscore adjust, and what we want to adjust is the bottom, and we want to add 0.23. Again, that's another thing that's covered pretty well in that other video. So it's pretty much all of this stuff. So if you want to know more about uh, formatting uh, charts, uh, you can check that out. But again, that's not really the focus of this tutorial. Plus, I've already covered it, so I don't want to you know, cover the same stuff, especially for the people who have already watched those other videos. So now the last thing I really want to do is show you guys um, a representation of that uh, the spread. And so if you did watch the other video, it'll be a lot like how we did volume, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say AX1 underscore 2, so like second version of AX1. And that's just going to be AX1.twinx, empty parameters. And then all we want to do is do ax1 underscore 2 dot fill underscore between. And what do we want to fill between? Well, date first, then zero. That's like the minimum that it will fill under. And then ask minus bid. So this is basically ask minus bid, obviously. It's going to be the ask price minus the bid price, otherwise known as the spread. So ask minus bid. And then we'll just give it a face color of like green and an alpha of uh, 0.3. And that should be it. We should have a pretty decent looking chart at this point. So let's save that. We'll run it. And 
and putting obviously if you're not if you're totally new to Python to run the function you got to type in you know graphfs to enter and here is our chart now All right, so we can actually see everything it's got that freaking offset oh my goodness I know what it's I know what I did wrong what we need to do is move uh, this plot GCA offset we really want to offset uh, the AX1 plot stuff, so put that here, and then it really will offset that. So let's run it one more time. Alt P, and there we go. Much more pretty. Okay. So, anyways, now you can actually see, uh, you know, the this this down here is the, the spread um, size, basically. So you can see some cool stuff with that spread size. But anyway, just something I wanted to show you guys since we did have bid, bid ask uh, tick data here uh, that you can do with that data. So anyway, we're going to close out of this, close out of this. So anyways, that's going to conclude the third video in the machine learning for Forex and stock trading. In the next video, we're going to start building up our pattern finder. So we're going to go through the uh, text file and start looking for patterns. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support and subscriptions, and until next time.